Hello everybody, this is Blade Cross EXE, and welcome to the first episode of Blade Cross EXE's Let's Plays. Now, I know I said I was going to do Boktai, the sun is in your hand first, but I decided to do a speed run of Super Mario World, since I played the game more times than I can count, and it'd be easier to uh, do all in one video. And, you know, I decided on this game mainly because I, I just wanted to... It's a game I know like the back of my hand, and I just wanted to do this as a little test to see if my recording software is, you know, what I need for these Let's Plays. Uh, uh, before we start, a uh, big thanks to uh, Luigi Fails, who, you know, first gave me the idea to do these Let's Plays. Uh, Subordinary Gamers for some tips they gave me on how to get my picture in the corner of the screen. And to my brother, Striker105Alpha, for letting me use his controller, because I, uh, I tried to play this game earlier with the keypad, and I just I'm wasn't that great at it, because it's been a while since I played an emulator. Anyway, so, uh, enough out of me. Let's start, th start this video. I know I'm not looking directly at the screen, it's because the screen on my laptop is broken and I'm using the webcam from the laptop, so the, the camera's facing me, but the monitor I'm looking at is actually right here. It's, uh... Yeah. Alright, um, this is gonna be a speedrun where I do only the absolutely necessary things, so that means, you know, no switch palaces, you know, no secrets unless it helps me get straight to the end of the level. Or straight to the end of the game, really. Uh, this isn't exactly a walkthrough, but it's, it'll just, you know, show you how to beat the game as fast as possible. So yeah, I'm, I'm not looking to get a whole lot of great reviews, you know, for this video. It's, this is mainly just, you know, to test the recording software. I hope the sound's coming through okay on the Super Nintendo emulator, because while it's recording uh, a video, I can't hear the sound on the game itself. I mean, I already did a few test recordings for this, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I can't hear the audio from the emulator itself. I just hope it comes through on the video. One thing you need to know about these Let's Plays I'm doing, whenever I fight a boss, I will be using different uh, boss battle music other than what's in the game, unless I really like the game's boss music. Um... Just because, you know, I can always think of better battle music for most of these games. Now, I may die a few times in this because while while I'm playing this and it's it is recording, I am getting a little bit of lag uh, on, on the emulator itself. I just hope it comes out okay on the video. Yeah, it's probably lagging because my uh, I've got so many programs running right now. I've got like four or five different programs pulled up at the same time, I'm trying to do these recordings, and you know my computer's got a whole lot of junk on it, so I need to clear that off soon. Now, there are a few secrets I'm going to show you in this, but they're mainly just to get through the game as fast as possible. I'm going to show you the location of one of the star roads and uh, a secret way to beat a couple of the levels. Also, for these uh, Let's Plays, I'll not be using save states, uh, you know, unless it's absolutely necessary uh, to save the game. Like, if I'm playing a game that, uh, do, that cannot save. Like, um, like I said, I was going to do Super Star Wars as uh, one of these Let's Plays. It, it doesn't have uh, a save file at all, and it doesn't do, do passwords like Super Return of the Jedi does. So I'll, I will be using save states for that, but only as a means of saving my progress. I won't use it to cheat death or anything. I'm, I'm going to try to avoid as many jump cuts as I can. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not live streaming this, so I uh, really don't have a reason to. Uh, Crap. I meant to get that uh, Koopa shell so I can uh, fix the power block up here, but I guess I can do that too. Anyway, um, yeah, I'll try to avoid uh, jump cuts, you know, whenever possible, because uh, I just 
think that if you're recording it at home, you shouldn't really have to have that many. I actually had to kick my little sister out of the room earlier, because I told her I need to record this video. Because, uh, you know, I, I said two weeks ago I was going to try to do it every Wednesday, but, you know, stuff came up and I didn't get around to recording it until just now. Now, it, it may be every Wednesday, if possible. It may not. I'm currently looking for another job, because the job I have right now is kind of bad. It's long story. Uh, but I'm currently looking for another job, and depending on my new work schedule, uh, you know, may change when, when my Let's Plays you know, take place. You know, I was actually, uh, when I downloaded the Super Mario World ROM, uh, uh, the folder came with a lot of neat looking hacks, and, uh, you know, like, none of them looked as good as this one called Brutal Mario. I, I have played a little bit of it, and I just really wish the guy who made it would finish. Just, uh, you know, kind of made me sad because I, I played some of it, and what I did play, I loved. Especially since, you know, he had all kinds of bosses, like everything from Mega Man to Final Fantasy and stuff like that. Some of these other hacks I've played are, you know, just, they're not that great. You know, some of them sound pretty neat, like uh, one called Bowser's Revenge. It's basically a Super Mario World sequel. Even though you want to get technical, Yoshi's Island could be called the sequel or prequel because it's called Mario World 2. Okay, at this point, I'm pausing the gameplay for a second because I'm bringing up the, uh, the, new, the new boss battle music. Yoshi's Island boss battle theme. Hello, Wiggy. Man, like, I don't know if it's my Super Nintendo itself or if it's my copy of the game, but my actual copy of Mario World may be glitched because every single boss battle seems pixelated, and it's been a while since I fought him in an optic played style. That was underwhelmingly easy. Couldn't even get to the best part of the song. And there goes the castle. All right, now, Donut Plains one. First thing here is dismount the Yoshi because some of the head you need to get. That guy with the red cape gives you a feather, which lets you have a cape and fly. It's probably my favorite power up in all of Super Mario. You know, just because, you know, everyone's wanted to be a superhero at some point. You know, most people at least. That and I actually love the idea of flying. Sorry, I had to leave Yoshi leave, leave behind, Yoshi. But you know, that's one reason you're in the game. I was gonna have to ban you in a little bit anyway. Because since I haven't gotten the green switch palace yet, uh, blocks up ahead aren't there. And I, I need to get up this spot right there in order to get the, the secret exit. Just gotta avoid getting hit by there we go. And up. There's the key, and in the hole. To donut secret one. Switch to the fire flyer for this. Rip Van Fish. You know, some of these uh, Mario characters really have creative names. You know, some of them are really neat, like Rip Van Fish and Bullet Bill, Torpedo Ted. Then you have some that are just weird, like the lava monster uh, that hides in the lava rivers is uh, is named Blarg. So two G's. You know, if I miss if I miss anything, you know, you don't need to say, "Hey, you missed this. You missed this." That's well. I mean, this is a speed run. I'm not trying to get every single thing. Okay, that's another flower. I need that. Yeah, fish fry. Yeah, um, I'm gonna try to do these let's play plays pretty regularly. I will start. Boktai, the sun is in your hand next, and uh, I've got a couple friends who have already suggested other games I, I should play. One of them was Happy Wheels, and you know, I've watched some people play that, and it looks pretty funny and infuriating. 
If you have a request for a game you like to see me play, uh, you know, besides Slenderman and stuff like that, because I'm not big on horror games or jump scares, then, you know, uh, leave a uh, suggestion in the comments below. I mean, I'm not scared of Slenderman, especially since I saw Slenderman drawn as My Little Pony, and, you know, like, I already wasn't scared of him, but that just killed any creepiness he had. Ponies have corrupted yet another thing. Now, this level has a secret exit that I actually didn't find out for for years. I mean, until, you know, like, well over, like, five or ten years after I already had the game. Let's see, this game came out in, 90, in 91, I think. I was born in 93. Wow, this game is over 20 years old. That makes me feel old. Yeah, it's right here. Go up the vine. I don't think I discovered this till I was in maybe 6th or 7th grade. Yep, Big Boo boss battle. I don't even remember how we discovered it. I, I think we were at my Nana's house because, you know, since we had the N64 and the PlayStation at home, we would leave the Super Nintendo with her. Uh, yeah, and, you know, we, whenever the parents were talking about stuff, they would, uh, they would, well, we would go upstairs and play this. I know, uh, I know I said I'm gonna do different boss battle music, but I didn't hear because, well, honestly, I forgot about because I was talking, and I didn't have the right file pulled up. I was gonna use the mini boss theme from Yoshi's Island, but I forgot to add it to the media player playlist. Now, Star World has a lot of secrets in it. And in order to progress to the next Star Road, you need to beat each level at its secret... in a secret way with a key. Like so. Despite how short that was, that's actually not the shortest level in the game. It's not this one we're playing, but the next one after that is the shortest one. And this is one of my favorite levels in the game, because you get a blue Yoshi. And that's the only reason that I like this level so much. Blue Yoshi has always been my favorite. I mean, I always like Yoshi. And, you know, I like most of the colors. Like, uh, red is awesome because it breathes fire. Blue's always been my favorite color. But blue can do something that others can't. Blue can fly no matter what color turtle shell he has. And I... I think I just lost my Yoshi. Come back. Dang it. Yeah, so it looks like I'm gonna have to redo this level because I, I need... I need the Blue Yoshi for my speed run. Well, at least to beat, beat the level as, as fast as possible. I guess I could do it without the Blue Yoshi, but it would it would take a lot longer. So I'm just going to beat this level, then I'll come back and get another one. Yeah, this is the normal way to beat the level. It does not let you progress to the next area. Just over here. I can try that again. I mean, considering how much I've played Mario World, you think I should be able to do all this stuff flawlessly. But I'm used to playing with Super Nintendo's controller, and the controller I'm using is shaped just like a PS2 controller. I mean, the buttons are in the same basic location, but it's, you know, it feels a little different. And like I said, I've got a slight lag on the emulator here. One thing I never understood is all the, about Mario World is you know all the Yoshi's arms are orange. Did anyone notice that compared to Yoshi and everything else? Every single Yoshi has orange arms, and you can especially see that at the end of the game when they're all gathered around Yoshi's house after he beat Bowser and have gotten all the eggs. I, I, just, I just never understood that. Why, why do all Yoshi's have orange arms in this? Are they all wearing clubs or something? Yeah, one thing I always thought was cool about Yoshi was, uh, whenever he eats an opponent in this, it counts as you getting a coin, so you can just, you know, eat everything on the screen and you can get a one-up. Yeah, here's where the secret exit is. Though, if you grew up in the 90s, then you probably played this game too, and you probably know where everything is just like I do. I'm gonna go back and, uh, 
Oh, wait, here we go. It is the shortest level in the game. Because the goal is right there. And there's lack two. So where's secret exit? Bam! Sit down. <laughs> okay, now jump. Then fly up. There's a little stone structure. Well, okay, I guess you want to get, if you want to get really technical, the shortest level in the game is, is Yoshi's house. But that's not really a stage. Right. Now here is where I really need a blue Yoshi, which is the reason I had to go back and do the level again. There's a red Yoshi egg, which ends up being one up. Uh, crap, 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 crap. Ah. Dang. You just saw me fail hardcore. Let me backtrack a few levels real quick. Okay. I know this isn't the level where you get Blue Yoshi, but I need another cape. This makes things a whole lot easier. Right here. There we go. There's actually a glitch in this level where if you, uh... Well, in any level, it's got those kind of blocks, really, but especially in that one, if you are spinning with your cape and flipping the, uh, the blocks too fast and you're too close to the wall, then it, it will actually glitch you through the wall and make you get, uh, get stuck, and it'll kill you. You know, like, if you, if you get caught between, you know, a, a scrolling screen and a, an object or something. Alright, let's try this again. Hopefully without any hardcore failure. Jump. And you just witnessed another hardcore failure. <laughs> I'm off today. It's kind of embarrassing because I, I did this. I already did a, a test run of doing my speed run before I started recording. So I, I shouldn't I shouldn't be failing this bad. Oh, so we all have our off days, right? Cape. Now, back to Star World 2. Again. To get another Blue Yoshi. Oh, my next one is deaf. Okay. Star World 4, take 3. There we go. Now, for the rest of the level, you can pretty much just fly over everything else. Boosh. One thing you gotta keep in mind, though, even though Yoshi doesn't immediately swallow the turtle shell, if you let it sit long enough, he will. And that'll make you fly fall out of the sky. Now, there's, uh... If you have the cape equipped uh, while you're flying uh, Yoshi, you can constantly, uh... You can constantly fly instead of having to keep tapping the button over and over again. Hold still. Okay. Yeah, like, if I didn't have a cape, I would just have to keep constantly tapping it. Okay. Now. Jump off. Key. Now. By doing these levels, you just completely bypass basically the entire game and can move straight ahead to the final level. Valley of Bowser. Front door. You know, as a kid, I always wondered, why was that level called Front Door? But then, uh, a couple years ago, when I was in high school, I was playing, uh, I was playing the Game Boy Advance version, and I actually found out you can, uh, you can go in through that little tower at, at the back of, uh, at the back of the castle, and it's called Back Door. And, you know, I, I just, I, I didn't knew, I didn't know that as a kid. And, like, in order to get there, you have to beat the hardest level in the game, which is, uh, which is, uh, the Valley, ba Valley Fortress. If you can hear that in the background, it's my uh, my cell phone's text tones going off. My text tone is uh, Cemetery Gates by Power Quest. Great song. It's probably my friend Little Wolf or Nova texting me. Okay, let's see. What's the door number five? Ah, crap. Spike columns. And these spike columns are the very reason that the Valley Fortress is one of the hardest levels in the game. This is one of the quickest rooms to get through, especially since the 
That's why columns don't move that fast. Another thing, if you go through the back door after being the Valley Fortress, then you just you start from right here, this little uh, dark room. You don't have to go through any of the rest of it. You just start back there, and there will be a, uh, a continue gate waiting for you at, at the big red door. All right, here we go. But before I uh, before I begin the battle with Bowser, I'm uh, switching up the boss music again. So pause the game. Here we go. That's right, Bowser's boss theme from Yoshi's Island, because I think it's way better than this one. Come on, Bowser. Let's do it. Now, I remember fighting Baby Bowser as a kid on Yoshi's Island, and he, he kind of scared me a little bit, mainly just the fact of how big he was, and he would, you know, he'd run at the screen, and if you didn't beat him fast enough, then he'd, he'd basically destroy the ground, and, you know, you'd fall to your death. You're just like, how do you fight something that huge? One. Yeah, like I was saying earlier, my copy of Super Mario World may be glitched, or maybe it's my system. I'm not entirely sure. Because, uh... Like, ow. Are you kidding me? I was careless. I thought there was more room than that in between the wall and the door. Or, the wall and the fireball. Alright, let's try that again. Should probably need to change, turn the music back. Okay, now the music back to normal. <sighs> well, that was fail-tastic. Okay, got my cape back. Now. Go, 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 go. Ah, crap. I'm die. <sighs> Big mistake. I'm not do I'm not, not making these mistakes on purpose. I'm I'm just not thinking. Come on. You know, I'm, I'm kind of torn on a few ideas for AMVs that I'm doing right now. You know, I've got a, I've got a few lined up that I've already started working on, but I'm, I'm just not, I just don't really feel like finishing them right now. At the same time, uh, I've got another request that was given to me by uh, my brother, Strike105. Uh, oh, dang it. Uh, he asked that I do uh, a Kingdom Hearts music video using the cutscenes from the game to the song Tides of Time by Epica. It sounds pretty cool, and I've already listened to the song. I just need to listen to it a bit more to memorize the lyrics and all that. Uh, a couple of other uh, music videos I'm trying to do are a few Soul Eater ones, because you know, it's an awesome anime, and I've thought of a couple of great ideas no one's done yet. Not gonna, not gonna say what they are, so someone doesn't beat me to them. But, uh... A couple of them are pretty good ideas. Alright, let's try this yet again. Can't go any further that way. Alright, three, two, go. Wait, yeah, go, 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 go. Oh, whew. That was close. Probably gonna die again, though.
that's craptastic. I don't know why I'm failing so bad. I mean, I can usually do all this, you know, really easily. When I remember as a kid, I, was al I would always pick this door to go through Bowser's Castle, number three, because it has the cape feather in it. Honestly, I don't even remember what's behind all of the other doors. I mean, I know there's one that's uh, a water level that has uh, has spikes in it. Then, of course, there's this. Then there's the uh, these floating platforms that have, like... Uh, I think they're called hotheads and, and little sparks are in them. Go, 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 go. Ouch. Oh, crap. I don't know why they didn't kill me. Get off my screen. Bam. You know, I... I find that uh, I find it interesting that you fight the the ninjas here. That's what these little black things are called. I think it's interesting because these guys actually first appeared in Super Mario 2, uh, and in the Super Nintendo version. Okay, uh, now we're at Bowser pausing again and restarting the epic boss music. In the Super Nintendo version, they were purple and they worked for uh, Wart. Yeah, I've often heard debated whether or not uh, the American version of Mario 2 is canon, is canon because the the real Mario 2 is actually uh, what we know as Super Mario Lost Levels is on the Mario All Stars game, and the Mario 2 that uh, we have in America was actually a Japanese game called Doki Doki Panic, and it just so happened that uh, that the four playable characters match the physiques and you know stats of existing Mario characters. You know, I actually watched some footage of it, and pretty much everything about it is spot on to uh, Mario 2. Only difference is the playable characters and a few things like uh, the life up you get is uh, not a mushroom. I forgot what it is. Uh, you know, I only watched I only watched the video once, didn't watch the whole thing. I was just checking to see if it was any different. Oh, come on! Pausing again. Man. I don't know why I'm failing so bad. If this happens one more time, I may actually do a jump cut. Because I just... I, I shouldn't be failing this bad. I, I, I'm better than this. I am. Seriously. I mean, I've beaten this game more times than I can count. Well, maybe uh, going through the back door so many times has... Has caused me to lose my edge. At, be at beating Bowser's castle, because I just skip everything. Okay, let's try. Let's try a different door this time. Let's go through door number six. See what's in here. Yeah, this is the underwater part. It's got spikes in it. Ooh, dang. Yeah, and uh, yeah, they just hit the wall up there. Yeah, this one actually has another power up in it. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm not too much mistaken, I think there's also uh, ball and chains in here too. Yeah, there they are. Go up. Now here's the tricky part. You know, since I was uh, talking about Mario Lost Levels earlier, that reminds me, I, I actually just recently beat Mario Lost Levels on the on Mario All-Stars, so I'm pretty proud of myself for that, because that game is so freaking difficult. I mean, I was failing harder at it than I am at this right now. Yeah, but, you know, it's like I said earlier, this isn't really so much to show off my gamer skill, this is uh, just to test the recording software. Because actually, to get this up and running right, I'm going to have to use like three or four different programs. Alright, switching back to the epic music. <sighs> you know what they say, third time's the charm.
There we go. Take it, Bowser. Gotcha. Now I'll get rid of that. I know I can save it for the next for the next uh, next time he flies up, but I'm not gonna take any chances of it, you know, jumping at me. Finally made it to round two. There we go. That should make things a bit easier. Now the second phase of this battle, I think, really is the hardest. Uh, mainly because of the, well, because of that. The big ball. Now, if you, uh, if you see me, uh, if you see something cut out of either the footage tape or the live recording, uh, is because, like I said, I'm not live streaming, so I'm actually recording this using the emulator's recorder, and my webcam, so I may need to trim it a little bit to sync it up properly. Restarting the epic music because the track's really not that long. Ah, crap. Oh well, not like any difference. Basically, Bowser lands on you once you die because he counts as a crush death, I think, instead of just a hit. The one game I think is kind of interesting is they made a. Uh, I seen a uh, bootleg of Mario World for the NES. It's pretty interesting. Bam! That's it. And kill the epic music. Ha! Take that, Bowser. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Team Bowser's blasting off again! <laughs> and all Mario gets for saving the princess is a kiss. Seriously, all, all he ever gets from her is a kiss and maybe a cake if he's lucky. I really don't like Peach that much. I like Daisy better. For, for various reasons. Yep, the fireworks there, it's throwback to Mario 1, as far as I know. So, that was my first Let's Play. Didn't turn out quite as well as I hoped, because I failed like a, like a fool several times. I would say I failed like a boss, but bosses don't fail. Unless they're video game bosses, in which case they probably do fail, because you beat them. Now we're just uh, watching the credits roll. I'm not gonna make you sit through all the credits, I'll probably cut the video off whenever they get back to Yoshi's house, because there's just not much else to see except the different names of all the various enemies. One thing I didn't understand though is, uh, if you actually fight the Koopalings in-game, you know, the bosses in all the castles, you fight them in-game, some of them are different colors than they are at the end of the, uh, at the end of the video, when it shows, you know, the big group shot. Uh, uh, I think I'll, yeah, I'll let it play throughout, through the end to show you what I'm talking about. Is uh, yeah, I mean, like, I know Roy Koopa, when you fight him in this game, he's blue, but in the, uh, in the picture where it shows all the Koopas, he's, uh, silver, or gray, or something. And Ludwig, when you fight him, or Ludwig, however you, however you want to pronounce it, the guy who wants to be Beethoven, whenever he, uh... When you fight him, he's yellow, but at the end, he's pink, I think. I know that in uh, in the original Mario 3 and in uh, the newer games, Roy's is pink, and you know most of the Koopalings have different colors than they do in this. Like, Ludwig, his hair is blue instead of uh, silver, and uh, or white or gray or whatever, it's kind of tell based on these graphics. And his, uh, you know, his shell is uh, is green instead of yellow. Okay, so, uh, right here, uh, 
Okay, you see, they arrive back at Yoshi's house, and all the Yoshis have orange arms. I don't understand it. Doesn't make a lick of sense. I mean, it's supposed to make sense for the yellow and red ones, but not really for the blue and green ones. And now, basically, the only thing that's only thing it is now is it shows us what the different enemies are. The amazing flying Hammer Brother. Because Hammer Bros don't really make that many appearances in this. Sumo Brothers. You see even less of them. Yeah, you know, for those of you who watched the Super Mario World cartoon, you may have noticed that they changed some of the names for some of these enemies, like Bonsai Bill, I think, was uh, was replaced by uh, Magnum Bill or something like that. Or maybe it was Bullet Bill. I I don't remember. It's, it's either Bullet or Bonsai Bill was replaced with Magnum Bill, but I'm guessing that's because, uh, you know, the fellas at the freaking FCC can't allow them to say words like gun or bullet or die, death, or kill. Stuff like that. Stupid censorship stuff. We know what it really means. Yeah, Blarg. Lava Monster. Some of these names are really awesome. Some of these names are really generic. Some of these names are just like, what? Yeah, like Porcupine. That's, that's kind of clever. Urchin. <laughs> Rip Van Fish, because he's sleeping all the time. Torpedo Ted. The Boo Buddies. Fish and Boo. <laughs> you know, I always thought it was funny that uh, if you turn your back on some of the, uh, the smaller boos, uh, if you... Uh, there are certain parts of the game that'll actually make a face at you. They'll like stick your tongue out. They stick their tongue out at you. They're like. Bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> I don't really think grinders and ball and chains count as enemies. Cause I mean they're more like obstacles. Since you can't kill them. Well, you can't really kill the bonefish either. Resnor. Took me a while to remember how to beat him after I started playing uh, a couple years ago. Remember, we gotta hit the. Guy hit the block under him to knock him off into the lava. And here are the Koopa kids. Uh, yeah, Roy Koopa is gray here when he's blue when you fight him. Then you saw Ludwig, he was pinkish or magenta or whatever instead of, uh, instead of being yellow. Well, thanks for watching, guys. This has been Blade Cross EXE, and this is the first episode of Blade Cross EXE's Let's Play. Um, you know, uh, tune in next week. I'll try to have the first video of me playing Boktai The Sun Is In Your Hand up. You know, uh, if you like what you saw, then, you know, like, comment, and subscribe. You know, thanks for watching, guys.